Hey, hey, everybody. <clears throat> wow. Awkward. Hey, hey, everybody. This is Larry. This is day 29 of the Lico Day Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's farm. Find K closest elements. Given this sword injury array and 200 just K and X, return the K elements closest element to X in the array. The result should be sorted in ascending order. Okay, so given that 10 is to go to fourth, you know that, um, you know, let's say we find X and X is in the array, right? Is it guaranteed to be in the array? Just double checking. Apparently not. I'm lying. Um, but we can just do a binary search and then kind of, um, you know that the next number is going to be either left of that number or right of that number. And then we just kind of keep going, kind of expanding it one by one, almost like a sliding window, but almost like an expanding window or something like that, where, you know, or, or someone like, like a hungry, hungry Larry, you know, eating left or eating right, and then just keep on eating uh, one to the left or to the right. Hopefully that visualization helped. But, uh, but yeah. I think that's pretty much it, but it's case closest, yeah. So I think that's basically the idea. And then it's going to be log n plus k or something like that. So yeah, let's get started. So then index is you go to, um, what's it called? Bisect dot bisect left r, and then we try to find x. So then now, what does this index tell us, right? That means that um, the index is either going to be exactly the number which are they could they could they be unique or do they have to be unique rather well, i guess they don't have to be unique I, mean, I guess they don't have to be unique i guess it's just a standing order but yeah so in that case it's still going to be the first instance in which it is the equal to um so that means that we want to look at the index and then the left index uh, uh left of that Right, so here we go right is the boundary, and then left is equal to right minus one. Um, so then here, and we have a, a sort of an answer as well. And then while left is greater than you go to zero, and right is less than n, right? Then we, we, um, what do we do, right? We, we uh yeah we check to see which one is closer that's pretty much it if they you code then a is then the smaller number is okay so yeah so then here i mean we're just gonna be as as ex explicit as possible so no you know as much as we can so left delta is equal to r sub left um and then x right so the left side is always going to be smaller than so this is fine i mean you can also add an absolute value of you you know, and in contest, I might actually do that, to be honest, just because, just because, you know, it's, uh, um, yeah, I might do that during the contest just because, uh, <laughs> it's harder to get wrong. Uh, you know, you, you, you know, use the tools given to you, you know, don't let the code bite you or something like that. Right. But yeah. So then here, if left delta is, um, less than or equal to right delta then we want to pick left so then we decrement by left but first we we put in uh sub left right and then else we want the right right and then right we increment by one and then of course after this loop is done that means that oh and also we have to do uh, a k um and k greater than zero we could i guess decrement this yeah right and then here we go while k is greater than zero that means that either left is um if left is greater than zero then we take it from the left because one of these things have to be true right i mean i guess we could do it this way so otherwise because k has to be smaller than x or uh, yeah so should be okay Otherwise, then we will just have to fix it as fine. Else, we take it from the right. And that's pretty much it, I think. At least if the constraints are all correct or whatever. And I am all correct or whatever. Do we have to sort the answer or anything? 
our data results should also be sorted in ascending order. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think how would I, I mean, obviously we can just also sort, but that adds to complexity, right? So let, let me think, I was just a little bit lazy because I wasn't thinking about this part yet. So when we insert from the left, I mean, this, there is a kind of like a, a thing, right? Where if we insert from the right, then we insert to the front, to the end, and then we insert to the left, we insert, they're all gonna be small numbers, so we insert to the left, right? So yeah, so we can actually change this to a, a deck, right? Um, and then here, if we take it from the left, then we append left and so forth. And I think that's pretty much all we need if I understood what is going on. Yeah, so that looks good. Um, yeah, let's give it a spin. K cannot be zero. Let's try a K equals one just for fun. And also, I want to make sure I do the tie breaking rules right. Do I? Yeah, so let's do, for example, I guess I kind of do. Maybe, I don't know. Hmm. Let's do vote. Of course, for these inputs, it's easy to kind of uh, test to yourself. So, you know, if they didn't tell me, I would just, you know, look for the, what I know to be the right answer or what should be the right answer. So let's give it a submit. Apparently, I did it a year ago. Cool. Um, yeah, so this, ooh, uh, 912 day streak. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, this is going to be the log n part. So this is O of log n. And, of course, these are all O of log k. Um, you, so in total time, this is going to be O of log n plus k, or k plus log n. Um, of course, this is uh, this is time, and of course, space is just O of 1. I've, oh, well, O of k, sorry, because that's the size of the output. Um, and of course, you, can, you, you, know, you may be tempted to say, well, k could be n, right? So why not just say this is O of n, uh, time and space, right? <clears throat> Um, so why not say that, right? Well, this is an example of what we call um, output sensitive, sensitive sensitive algorithm. So in these cases, the you know um, the output, the size of the output, which actually they give you the size of the output, but that it's not always true depending on the algorithm. Um, in an output size sensitive algorithm, you know you use k as a variable, right? Um, as as an input to your complexity. Um, of course, there are other dimensions in other cases as well. And, you know, certain things will perform differently in certain scenarios. Um, but in this case, you know, if you just hide it between the O of N time and space, you definitely lose out on some performance uh, benefits uh, depending on whatever, right? Um, depending on you know, what the N is, what the K is, and so forth. Of course, you can also say that, for example, if you know K is always N for whatever reason, then this is just going to be O of N, right? So there's stuff like that, but <clears throat> uh, but it really depends on what you optimize for and what you think about and stuff like that. Uh, cool. That's really all I have for this one, though. Let me know what you think. Stay good, stay healthy, take good mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye-bye.